week's video, I'll show you a technique for creating a one row buttonhole that can also be used to create wider openings like the one used in this lace scarf. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. Now there are three basic types of buttonholes. Yarn over buttonholes, which create small circular openings, vertical buttonholes, which create vertical slits, and horizontal buttonholes, which create, you guessed it, horizontal slits. Within each basic buttonhole type, there are lots of variations. For a horizontal buttonhole, the basic process is to first determine how wide the hole will be. That is, how many stitches wide it will span and also where it will be placed. Then, to create the hole, the typical method is to bind off the number of stitches required for the hole and then to cast on an equal number of stitches above it. Now, this is commonly done over the course of two rows, with the binding off for each hole done on one row and then the casting on done on the following row. Today, I'm going to show you how to do both the binding off and the casting on during the course of single row. After the demonstration, I'll show you what it looks like when used with various stitch patterns and offer some tips for how to use it. Finally, I'll show you some examples of the buttonhole used in several of my own projects. So let's get started. So we're going to demonstrate in stockinette fabric so you can see the results better and to see what's actually happen, happening. Um, I'll show samples that were knit uh, using buttonholes in garter stitch and um, ribbing, but for right now I'm going to knit four, create a buttonhole over four, knit four, create a buttonhole over four, etc. I'm going to do three of them. So I'm going to go fairly quickly through the first buttonhole. I'll go slowly through the second and then I'll just go in normal speed through the third so you can see how it works in real time. So I'm going to knit four. And now I want to create a buttonhole over these four. And to create a buttonhole, what we're going to do is bind off these four stitches, and then we're going to cast on five stitches. Now the buttonhole can really be any width, um, but however many stitches you bind off, you cast on one stitch more than that. So here's how to begin. The yarn comes forward, you slip one as if to purl, and then the yarn comes to the back. You slip one more stitch. Now we're going to do a bind up. Now we're not going to be using the working yarn at all. We're not working stitches at all. I'm keeping a little tension at the beginning. Um, but now I've bound up the first one. I'm going to drop the working yarn just because I don't need that tension. So I slip another and I'm just going to pass the second one over. So now I've bound off two. I've bound off three. And now I've bound off four. Now uh, this stitch hasn't been worked or bound off, but it needs to get out of the way. I'm going to return it to the left hand needle. Now I need to cast on five stitches over the top of this. So those five stitches have to come onto this needle because the working yarn is, a, is that's, that's where the working yarn is attached. So you always cast on stitches onto the needle where the working yarn is attached. I'm going to turn the work, bring the yarn to the back, and then I'm going to do the cable cast on, which I'll explain in the next round, to cast on five stitches. So it's one, two, three, four, Five. Let me just confirm. I got my four and I've got my five. So I've got my five stitches cast on. I'm going to turn the work again like this. Now I'm going to get rid of that extra cast on stitch. I do that by slipping the next stitch on the needle and then passing the extra cast on stitch over that slip stitch. Then I return the slip stitch back to the left needle. So now I have four cast, my four original stitches and then my four cast on stitches. And now I can work the next four stitches. One, two, 
three, four. So now we're going to create a buttonhole over these four stitches and we to do that we bind those stitches off without working them and then we cast on that many more stitches plus one. So however wide the buttonhole is we cast on one stitch more than that. We begin by the yarn coming forward, slip as if to purl so you enter as if to purl slide it to the needle, bring the yarn back. So now that yarn is wrapped around that stitch. Now you're going to pass a second stitch and now we can begin binding off. So we have one, slip a stitch, two, slip a stitch, three, slip a stitch, four. We return this stitch back to the left needle. We turn the work, bring the yarn to the back so that we can begin the cable cast on. The cable cast on, it doesn't matter what hand your working yarn is in, um, the cable cast on is done by inserting your needle between two stitches. So it's going under the needle, it's between these two stitches, it's not in any stitch. And then you wrap it just like you're knitting it. So if you hold your yarn in your left hand, you grab it like that. If you hold the yarn in your right hand, you just do a normal wrap around the needle. Whichever way you knit, that's how you wrap it around. So you're knitting through, you're knitting uh, between two stitches. Then you pull this loop out so you can make it as big as it needs to be. And you're going to bring the left hand needle through this loop you bring it across the front so that it can come in here from right to left. And then it goes on the needle. Now you want to do another stitch. Don't tighten this up yet. Insert your needle between the two stitches. Then you can tighten the yarn if you need to. If you tighten beforehand, it gets very difficult um, to get your needle through. So you can pull as big a loop as you want in order to get through that needle. You take your working needle out and put it back between the two needles or between the two stitches, then you can tighten up. So you do this one stitch more than what you bound off. Now, when you look at these, it's going to look like that's a cast on stitch. It's not. That's you started in between there. So the first stitch is to the right of that. So however many stitches you see right here is one less than you've actually cast on. So I have it looks like I've got a group of five. I really cast on four. And there's my fifth stitch. After I'm done casting on, I again turn the work. Bring the yarn to the back. I'm going to slip this stitch to the right needle so that I can bind off or pass over this last extra cast on stitch. And now I return that again to the left hand needle. The cable cast on, when it gets inserted between these two stitches and it, and it pulls the new yarn around, creates this horizontal strand around that stitch and the final the, the final um, bind off that we did initially is around this stitch on the left hand needle and when we passed off that last cast on stitch over it, it also created like a little necklace around those two stitches. So these uh, two stitches are not um, part of the bind off cast on but they do uh, reflect the edges of that buttonhole. So now you can knit to the next stitch. So one or next button hole, three, four. So now I'm just going to work through the entire process uh, one step after the other. Yarn forward, slip one, yarn back, slip a second, bind off one, let go of the working yarn. Bind off two, bind off three, 
bind off four, return stitch to left hand needle. Turn the work, cable cast on five. One, two, three, four, five. Turn the work, bring the yarn to the back, slip one, Pass that last cast on stitch over and off and return, return the slip stitch to the left hand needle. So on the stockinette side, because the bind up chains roll to the stockinette side, this is not a great looking um, buttonhole necessarily on the stockinette side of the fabric. But on the pearl side of the fabric, it does look pretty good. It's pretty invisible. I mean, you can see the hole, but otherwise the cast on method and everything hides pretty well. So if you have a, a project with reverse stockinette as the right side, this can work really well. You'd work the buttonhole on the stockinette side and, um, and then the result would look really good on the wrong side or the right side of the fabric. So on this swatch, I worked it in garter stitch. And on this, this is the side of the fabric where I, um, where I worked the buttonholes, but they look much better on the reverse side. So if you have a right side or a wrong side to your garter stitch, I would work the buttonholes on the wrong side of the fabric so that they looked better on the right side of the fabric. Um, as we saw before, the, when you have a four stitch buttonhole, the stitches uh, to the outside on either side uh, have those horizontal strands wrapped around either because stitches were bound off over them or because the cable cast on um, was knit between um, stitches. So you can see how on this side of the fabric, um, I worked the buttonhole in the second knit, the two pearls in the first knit but those um, strands, those horizontal strands, surround the outer knit stitch. And it kind of cinches in the, those columns of knit stitches that doesn't look that great. But on the back side, where those knit columns are pearl columns, and then you have two knits up the middle, it actually looks pretty good. So again, I would arrange doing the buttonholes on the wrong side of the fabric and so that those um, wrapped stitches are in knit columns so that they appear on this side of the fabric in pearl columns and it looks much better. So here's a project I'm working on right now. It's just a rectangular uh, wrap that is held around the shoulders um, with using a, a buttonhole and this is just marking my rows. Uh, it's kind of a fuzzy yarn and so the detail around the edges isn't that obvious. So this is something that's showing up on the right side of the fabric um, but I wanted a very sturdy buttonhole because this will this wrap will be going around the shoulders and with closed with one button and I, um, I wanted it to not ever fall out so I thought a very sturdy buttonhole would be helpful. Now this is the scarf I was wearing um, at the beginning of the video and this was knit uh, in two different directions. It was the, the scarf was cast on using a provisional cast on right here. The entire scarf was knit in this direction, the chevron pattern ending the scarf and creating that nice zigzag here. So I wanted the same end at this end of the scarf um, so that I get that same zigzag, which I wouldn't get defined like that if I had cast on in that direction. So I returned to right here, then I, I knit this garter border. I knit across the right side and then across the wrong side to create that um, garter ridge. And then I knit across a row. I, I knit up to here. I did the one row buttonhole 
finished the knit row and then I began this lace this lace pattern. This lace pattern begins with a wrong side uh, row uh, purled across and then I can begin the decreases and increases for the lace pattern. If I had done this hole in two rows by binding off and then casting on as I was purling across, I wouldn't have a actual row of knits or stitches available to, to decrease um, and to increase. I would have had to use the actual edge stitches to do that. So by creating the cast on edge um, on the right hand side of the fabric at the same time that I did the bind off edge, I was able to create this fabric. Now the hole ends up triangular because of the nature of the stitch pattern, the way the decreases and increases are stacked. Uh, when it was created, it was flat, but it's the stitch pattern that creates it. So that, that was actually to my advantage that this create, ended up creating a triangular hole. Once you've worked the buttonhole several times and understand the the process, it's fairly straightforward, but it can be tricky to get the hang of it at the beginning. I would recommend practicing on a swatch to, to decide how you want to place the buttonhole within your stitch pattern and whether you prefer working it on the right side or wrong side of the work. Because the bind off is done using existing stitches rather than done while working stitches, it tends to be less stretchy than other buttonholes. You may want to make your buttonholes an extra stitch wider than called for in order to accommodate your buttons, or you may want to select smaller buttons to accommodate the firmer hole. I don't use the one row buttonhole every time I need a buttonhole, but in certain situations, it's the perfect technique for a specific project. If you have any questions or comments about this video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below, or you can join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks, and there's a link to that down in the description box. Last week, I uploaded my first Casual Friday video. Instead of demonstrating a technique on Casual Fridays, I'll be talking about knitting and knitting related things. If you want to hear the story of how I learned to knit, you can click up here. And if you aren't already a subscriber, you can click on my face over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.